Hey guys, it's me, Darcy, joined as always by Chris. Yes. And welcome to this week's edition of the Unnamed Podcast. The podcast where we sit here for roughly an hour and talk rubbish. Yes. Don't show me that again. Um, as always, we'll start stuff off with a little bit of uh, behind the curtain, if you will. Talking about what's been going on channel-wise. Uh, so me and Chris did some filming this weekend. Um, you did. I've done a lot of editing. I've, I've finally taken on the Bunny Man. Uh, half, half of the Bunny Man. I, I've done half of the, the, um, the, the next half is the one that scares me and I don't want to touch it. Um, yep, no, and I, I don't completely understand why. But, video-wise, we're actually back up to having a nice, you know, about two weeks ago I was like, ooh, running out of videos, and now we're back up to like, we've got a couple weeks of videos in the, in, in the vault, ready to be unlocked and lobbed out so that's always good yeah i just realized my chair's not locked in how many more cold there we go it's because i've been in such a relaxed mood and my knee hurts fair um yeah so that that's happened um weekly news like um did you have a burger this week i did oh i actually did i had one yesterday it was to treat myself for doing so much editing oh solid reasoning yes, yeah yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> no, do I. Uh, I was I kind of moving know. on to weekly news, and I was like, "Is there anything channel related that I'm thinking of?" And I'm like, "Is it, am I missing something from the channel?" And it's like, "Yes and no." Yes, because I have plans, but no, because those plans aren't even close to being realized yet. Okay. But let's just put it this way. By September, I hope to be having figured out some stuff so that we can put up some shorts. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Specifically sub- September because the plans are I'm looking at buying a GoPro. Um, yeah. Because obviously, I, you know. While we're at the, on the trip. Yeah. On the trip, the GoPro is going to come in handy. But so. otherwise, I just want a GoPro. The other part of that is I'm also looking at one of the mouth mounts. <laughs> yeah. you, you laugh at that, but they're actually very important. Yeah. Um, and so we can get some actual on the mountain vid footage. Well, also yeah. looking for a car mount, but that's just that's other stuff. Yeah. Um, that's fair. Yes. So the plan is if uh, I'm looking at making that purchase in the next couple of months. Yeah. maybe two months away and I'm like it's a bit of a cost but one I'm happy to pay and it would also probably replace the current camera we use okay fair enough. at least for the podcast for other things I might run them in tandem mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Good, good choice so we can have multiple cameras like the GoPro is kind of the next step in having realizing multi-step filming yes um, because for the podcast where you know you just put it here and watch us film watch us sit here and talk about shit that no one really cares about um well they're very they're very high fidelity these days yes which is good um Indeed. and then for other stuff having two cameras would be very beneficial I believe I think so, yes, um, yes. Especially it would open up something that I've been wanting to do for a while now, which is some board game related stuff. Yes, yes, that would be, would be good. Uh, because a GoPro could be strapped to a fan to make everyone sick. Exactly. Vomit camera. We're not turning it off. No, fuck no. It's, it's too damn hot for that. We live in Queensland. We're leaving the summer period and entering the period where it's just hot and not raining. So, yeah, swings and roundabouts. So sucks. The the other thing, the other thing that I could do with the GoPro for board games yeah. is employ a very tall person to wear a head mount and just lean you know, over the game. Sam? Yes, hundred percent. That's there that's hundred percent. <laughs> <That's laughs> yes, we know a very tall person. We do. Um, 
Yeah, so that's that's kind of like I'm, I'm looking at getting like getting that. Yeah, um, yeah. Eventually, the plan would be to have mini GoPros, and, and I, I, I do want to get a DSL camera. But considering a GoPro is like five hundred bucks, yeah, and then a DSL camera is like seventeen hundred bucks. I'm like, I think we'll take the next step, not the final and step. Eventually, go for the final step. Yeah, and then yeah. you know, and and you know, you got to fucking. There's a lot more fussing around with a DSL camera. Fair. Yeah. That being said, I do want a DSL camera for my photography. Ooh, fair, fair. It's just a bunch of black and whites. Yeah, black and whites are good. Of Tonex. Random toenails. What? They are connected to toes. Are you selling I'm... feed picks? No, no. No. I'm going to put them in the uh, gallery of modern art. You know what? You fucking sell too. Yeah, it would. It, it, ab- it absolutely would. would. Um, Jesus Christ. It's like one of my favourite things, though, because technically speaking, we don't live in the modern era. No. We live in the contemporary era. Yes, yes. Uh, the modern era, for those of you who care, finished about the end of World War Two. Yeah. Roughly. I can't remember the exact dates. And then there was a whole lot of other stuff, and now we're in contemporary. So, like, you don't... If you look at something now, and you're like, well, that's pretty modern, what you're actually saying is, that's about 100 years old. <laughs> yes. Um, so, Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's 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 kind of the big channel news. You know, I'm, I'm looking at doing some expansion, getting some fancier equipment, uh, getting a mouth mount for the GoPro so that I can go swimming with it and snowboarding. Something I thought about mentioning to you is the, the <coughs> swimming side of things. <coughs> oh, dude, we used to, <laughs> one of okay. So my friend bought a GoPro back when we were in college. Um, and one of the best videos he got was of us at the beach body surfing. Yeah. And he just, like, he added in, because these were the old ones, we actually had to have the waterproof cases, because it was, like, yeah, almost 10 years ago now. Um, yeah, it was too. Yeah, in 2013, or 2014, might have been 2014. It's a um, new one that came out. No, it was the GoPro 4. 4? Yeah, they've been out for a while. Not that long, it was the GoPro 4, we're up to the GoPro 11. Yeah, I mean, it was close enough to the start, we still didn't have the proof. It's closer than we are now. Yes. Um, But you also had, like, the little floaty, like, thing, like, you know, those orange floaty things that you wrap your GoPro in? Like, we still have them that make them buoyant so that you can kind of let it float off. So we're, like, letting it float off and it's it's literally filming the bottom of the water and up and down as as the waves come in. (laughs) But then he, like, grabbed it and he had it on... It must have been the floating mount, like the little one that's just full yeah. of air. And he like picked it up, and one of fucking one of the guys comes body surfing, and he's not that close, but he's speaking to him. Well, he's not speaking to him; he's just going wee, <laughs> and you just hear it go like wee, <laughs> and like that's all the GoPro. Like the GoPro picked up that sound, but it just sounded like it was like it made him sound like he was moving at like a thousand miles an hour, <laughs> and because it, it's just like wee. <laughs> Even though, like, he was like, Wee! it was just like, Wee! Wee! it was like, fuck. That's so, pretty good. It's pretty good. So yeah, GoPros are such good fun, and I, I, I'm looking at getting one for well, fun and you know, channel yeah. expenses. Well, and then yeah. when I get like fifty, I can just stick them to my head and go go hunting. Yes, but I need two more dollars for Nick. that, Nick. Um, oh, Nick. <clears throat> This, this is a test to see if he watches all of our videos yeah. or pays enough attention to it. Gets called, like, he gets called out a lot for that $2 million. I think, I think he so. should just man up and pay it. Um, Being a reoccurring thing since single digits? Yeah, it would have been like podcast number four. Yeah, I thought so. Because that would be about the Halloween one. Oh, yeah, I would have said, Which yeah. we started at the end of September. We did, yes. And October comes after September. It, it does. <laughs> Indeed it does. I know months. Anyway. Yeah, so I guess that that's the channel news, guys. That's that's yeah. that's the next step forwards at this point in time, as far as we're aware. Hey, so Things change it, all if, the time. If you have a GoPro, I might get, 
We can do a lot of stupid shit outside even. <laughs> now I might get hit by a meteorite tomorrow. So, it's you know. Possibility. I if the channel suddenly goes dead because Chris has no access to it because he cannot be trusted. Yeah. Um, if it just goes dead, yeah, I'm probably dead. That's that's probably happened. Either that or I forgot to post something like I did that one time. But it wasn't dead. It was just a day later. <laughs> or if he misses one video and then I'm not in the next one. He's dead. But I'll probably say, oh, yeah, Chris has died. What a fucking prick. <laughs> now I have to make another friend. Oh, shit. It's a lot of work for me. Um, yeah, so yeah, anyway. Um, Trying to drag him into it. He's, he's got a job. He's a, he's a doctor. The man is a doctor. <laughs> he might leave it for this. Hey, Ricky, would you like to come to a job where you do not get paid? Yes. <laughs> I will leave my... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so... Um, Stay tuned. We will keep you updated on the GoPro process. Yes. Um, and what is next, Chris? What is next? Oh, I know what's next. Do you know what's next? What's now we're going to talk about news? the weekly news. Yes, yes. So what have we been up to this week? And for me, it's mainly been... Yeah. Wait, what's the date today? It's the 29th. Okay. So it's mainly been yesterday... The show, 23, came out on Xbox. Game Pass. The what show? The baseball game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a baseball game. I've been waiting for it for a couple months now. Because I love baseball. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. There's four of them sitting above my head. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, lo- I love baseball, so I've been waiting for that to come out. And then... Not tomorrow, mm-hmm. because tomorrow will be the 30th, but Friday, the 31st. So when this video's coming out. But not Friday, but not Friday? because it's actually the 31st in America, which will be Saturday for Ooh, us. okay. Major League Baseball's back. There we go. So I will have another sport to watch. One that is far less infuriating, yet at the same time more time intensive than the NRL. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's going to be good for me. It means that instead of having to watch NRL games on the weekend, I can watch baseball games. That's good. Uh, that's hopefully the Dodgers win. Uh, that's always a good thing. Although, because the show came out, like, literally yesterday, yes. I was having a look because it gives the stats of how many World Series the teams have won. Yes. And I was like, oh, the Dodgers have won seven World Series. That's not bad. It's not bad. That's oh, pretty good. That pretty puts good. them at the fifth highest team pretty good with i think two other two in front of them having nine yes one having 15 uh-huh. that's the red sox yeah. i believe red sox boston red sox boston red sox i may be saying yes and full agreement as if i know what i'm talking boston. about but i don't i have no idea okay i'm thinking boston red sox yes. but i'm also thinking philadelphia white sox and i can't remember who the white sox are right now White. If I look up white socks and it and just you get white socks, yeah, I got white sauce. Okay, fair, fair. People do so saying. Chicago white socks. Oh, we got the correct thing. But is it the Philadelphia? What about the Red Sox? Boston Red Sox. Did I say Boston Red Sox? I, I might. I have think said. you did. Chicago White Sox. Boston Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox have won like fifteen or something. Um. Yeah. Which is crazy. That's 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 like six more than the next highest team. Yes. Yeah. Um, and like number five only has seven. But then I was like, I know a team that was super successful back when I was younger. Yeah. New York Yankees. I was like, come on, the Yankees. Yeah. Like the Yankees are probably the most successful team I know of because of like being one of the richest teams for so fucking long. Yeah. So I was like. Probably like 16, 17. 29. They've won 29 or 27. It was 20 something. Like oh, ridiculously high. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Holy shit. What did we just have? Well, there was, yes, there were many years where they just were like, hi, oh, you have a really good player. We bought them. And they're like, but here's our other We bought him. And you're like, okay. And we've got this. No, you don't. <laughs> That's okay. We, at least we have the new cut. We bought the cars as well. Fuck. <laughs> 
What happened? Damn. Well, the the Yankees came in and just bought everything. Do we have anything left? They left us with the drinks machine. <laughs> no. Hell so yeah. yeah, no, the Yankees were really good, and when I saw that, they were just like so like they had so many more World Series than the rest. I was like, fucking Yankees. It's gonna be a while before they get overtaken. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it will, because you could only win one well, a year, yeah. <laughs> and they are just so much higher. I'd have to relook at the numbers, but I was just pissing myself laughing because I was like, goddamn Yankees. But yeah, so that's coming out. So I've been playing. A little bit of DMZ, because I always do. Yeah, I haven't been playing any Halo, because I've been playing DMZ. And yes. At the moment, I don't really have time to play more than one sh- first-person shooter at a time. Yeah, yeah. So, because of you, I've been... Well, actually, because I want to finish the Battle Pass, I've been playing a lot of DMZ. Yes. Um, Are you almost there? I am. I'm, I'm like one token away. Oh, solid. <laughs> Something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. So, um, so which is awesome, because... That's why I've also know. unlocked the secondary weapon for DMZ. We both have, so we're looking forward to losing that in the next couple of days. Um, no, we've got a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. I think when I got it, it was 18 days. Um, although we do have to do the raids. The raids are now what, where my mind is. We do, yes. Still going to get on to Jaden, though. Which means we need a friend. Um, um, when we're learning one up, Jaden, I'm fairly certain I've given you the challenge. Oh, yeah. he does have it. He has. He has subscribed. Um, oh, okay, there we go. Jaden, Jaden. I just raids. I flipped. I flipped. Um, what else have we been doing? Uh, sorry, DMZ. Um, the beta. The beta that I've been playing this week. I can't remember the game. Diablo Four. Yeah, yeah. Been playing some Diablo Four. I'm liking it. I've always been a fan of Diablo. I wasn't the biggest fan of Diablo Three, but I love Diablo Two and One. Played a lot of Diablo Two back in school. Like, yeah. That's how old it is. Um, we were playing it retro, unironically, back in 2010. Okay. So it was, like, really old by then. Okay, Diablo 2, because I know you've never played it, but Diablo 2 was old enough that it ran off a 1 gigabyte uh, USB back in 2010. <laughs> so nice. very old. Um, yes, yes. But I, I am liking Diablo 4. Um, it like seems got passed around the classrooms pretty much yeah exactly Halo COD it um, and Age of Empires yes. um, but I am liking it mainly because and I can't be 100% sure of this but we could be seeing some of the Microsoft influence on Activision Blizzard okay yes which you know is So I I have an opinion about Microsoft, and it's probably against what a lot of people believe, but Microsoft have actually done a lot if you actually look up them in terms of, like, gaming, where it's like they've done some stuff where they never intend to make the money back from it. Yes. It's just about making things better for gamers. Mm. Um, Of course, the way that they make money back is by having more gamers join them so by me what was i saying literally getting right yeah so microsoft i get it that they do things to make things better for the gamers based purely on the fact that they want more gamers because that makes them more money in the long run but you have to be serious when you say stuff like this because chris and chris can vouch for this right he has the sony game pass that they pretty much copied directly off xbox and xbox went for a fee and i don't know if this is still true but back when it first came out and i got on board game pass Mm -hmm. i was paying 17 dollars a week for xbox live not a week a month 17 dollars a month for xbox live yeah and they went get game pass ultimate game pass for the xbox and the pc how much you ask $15 $15 a month. And I was like, so I get access yes. to all these games for free and, and $2 save $2? And, and they went, exactly. And I went, what's the catch here? And they went, we're not telling you. And we've yet to, I've yet to see a catch. It's been pretty good so far. Yeah. Um, I'm playing the show now, a game that literally came out to yesterday for free. Yes. I think the game I'm thinking of I've watched two came out for free um they all did literally the game so I've watched two was free on everything yeah 
the game I've been playing recently that's in beta, I think will be exactly the same. Yeah, okay. Fair. Diablo 4, because that's owned by Microsoft, so fair. I imagine it'll come out free. Halo Infinite, a game that I love drastically, I haven't actually bought. I've just been playing it for free. Um, and I definitely would buy it if they were to go to me, Darcy, you now have to pay for it. I'll be like, all of my money. Take it. I don't need to go to the snow. Have it all. Because <laughs> um, that's how much I love Halo. So, yeah, for a lot of people being like, oh, it's an unsustainable model. But I think Xbox are fully aware of that and they just don't care. Because it's not yeah. like you get the games forever. Some of them you do. Like, I've yet to see Gears of War 5 be removed because that's owned by them. Yeah. But others are, like, on there for a short time. And in my mind, that's perfectly fine because it gives me an opportunity to play a game in its entirety before deciding if I want to own it or not. And I think that's, that's a fair. good thing. Like, I know we're going back towards demos now. Like, demos. Which is good. Which is brilliant because there have been so many high flops oh, Anthem comes to mind lots of people paid for that what else comes to mind what's another one uh, there's, there's been a lot there's, there's been so mate, many there's been a um, lot that have come out that's like this is going to be a great game and then just it's trash and without any kind of demo you, you, you have to pay a hundred bucks now yeah. to to get it and go oh this is shit mate, there's been multiple games actually Cyberpunk was one initially yeah. I to think, be fair, I, think I, th- I still, I, th- I, th- I think there's still issues that okay. there might be, but again, as someone who never had any big issues with Cyberpunk, yeah. other than the occasional glitch, and trust me, as I'm playing the show right now, it crashes about every hour. Fuck. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I blame bad. the fact that it's a PlayStation Studio game on an Xbox, and that they, they haven't quite gelled yet. No. But oh, I'm it's, sure it's it'll like crossplay between Xbox and PlayStation. Still, it's a bit iffy. Um, but it's it's one of those things that you you go through and it's like, is that my internet connection or the fact that we're playing on two different things? Yeah. So it's it sort of varies. Like me but, playing um, DMZ on my laptop with people on the PlayStation, yeah. it occasionally has issues. Yeah. It's not and, and it will, and yeah. it will. But like this is the world we live in. We're going to come up across these new problems. But, yeah, so kind of like my whole thing, Game Pass, um, the super accessibility controller that Microsoft has put out, that you might, oh, yeah. you might, you guys might not even know about it, but it is pretty much a controller designed for, ev- so that everyone can game. And the amount of time that Xbox put into developing this controller that so few people actually use means that even if they sell it, and I think they sell it for like 120 bucks, right? Which, good. which seems expensive, but remembering well, that... The Elite Controller is 250 That's 250 That's my Elite Controller 2, the second one. A standard one's about 100 No, I think it's still higher. It? It's up to 150 still. For a standard? I think so. No, nah, 99 for a standard Xbox controller these days. Oh, I meant the Series 1 of that. Cause you can still oh, play. oh, no, I don't, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about why why would you buy an elite series one when the elite series two is so much better because now hear me out parents who have no idea what they're looking for will grab it because it's cheaper fair um but yeah so like yeah as i said this this controller that they've made that you can plug other things into so that it can function like you you know it's not just a accessibility controller it's literally a port that you can plug other things in and use as a controller they're never going to make back the money. 120 pre owned. Okay. Well, they're and never. That's, and that's on sale at the moment. 150. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, as I said, they're never going to make back the R&D they've spent on this. But they did that. Uh, that's one of those things they went in knowing that they were never going to make back the money because it's such a specific thing. But they'll yeah. make money elsewhere. Yeah. That's, that's the advantage. It's, it's, yeah, well, exactly. It's kind of opened up the Xbox. Well, and the PC. Well, it's like Elon Musk. He makes most of his money from his other businesses, not Tesla. True. Tesla is... I'm pretty sure if I'm correct in what I've heard... Actually, that's incorrect. Lost. Twitter is his biggest money loss. It is. <laughs> but for Twitter, Tesla is his biggest money loss because he's... I think he actually still runs it. Uh, he's somewhat of a... You sure it's not SpaceX that's his biggest money loss? Oh, that's a good point. I don't think he's ever made any money off No, he hasn't. Like, Tesla's... I don't even think... I'm not sure on the Tesla has either. 
I'm pretty sure Tesla started to make money, but he also okay. acknowledged that Tesla's stocks are far too high. Like, he's acknowledged that. Okay. That's not just people who hate electric cars being like, their stocks are... No, he literally went, hey, doesn't, don't Tesla stocks seem crazy high right now? Yeah. It's a bubble. Um, but, yeah. But, but, you know, like, that's kind of my whole thing with Xbox at the moment. I understand they're a corporation and they want to make money, but they also seem to actually care about making gaming easier for everyone. Yeah. Um, and as I said, you can attest to that because you bought the the PlayStation version of Game Pass, which is not nice as Microsoft have made my Game Pass at least, where it's like, no, 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 no. one subscription, everything. There are no levels. You just get everything. Yeah, this one's you get your base level, which is going you every the got the couple free games a month, and that's only for a month. Mm. It's permanently keep them though. Then games with gold. Then you go to the next one. <laughs> yes, which is games with gold. It's, when did they come out? Like uh, last last year. So did the one I'm talking about. The first level, first year has been out since end of PS3. Right. If I'm wrong, it definitely was... came out after Games with Gold, though. It was based on. Games oh yeah, yeah, you know it was. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but Xbox One, PlayStation. Then next zero. year gives you access to some of the new PS5 games for free, mm-hmm. and you go to the final tier. You've got everything else plus old games. So back from PlayStation One to yes. some three. Yeah. So you know. As I said, it, yeah. it seems great for people with PlayStation. Well, no, it's, it's better, more than seems great. It is actually great for people with PlayStation Fives. Yeah. It, it's great for people with PlayStation Fives because it does not function on other PlayStations. I believe so. Yeah. So it's great for people with. Oh, Play- no, some, some of the other, other games will be able to. Like the classic. No, games I, be, I don't think I've, the classic games. I think are able to. I don't think I've ever actually seen it advertised on my PlayStation Four. I've never seen it advertised either. Yeah. Oh well. I, you'd have to go into the store specifically. Um, it's a bit of an old one, but I, I think some of the older games will work on the PS4 because they're older games and there's already a few that were put on there. Okay. Um, um, and it's only the PS5 ones. So but no, yeah, no don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not disparaging the system. It's no, actually it's, great that these are now being made available. Especially I, what I am disparaging yeah. is the fact that they've made it this level system when, you know, what they're copying was pretty much just like, but if you have it, everything's yours. Pretty much. So, you know, again, I, I have to go with the Xbox form of this. Over oh, no, I agree. PlayStation. Yeah, I do agree. It is um, a, a better form. That is for sure. But yeah, so, um, how did we even get into this? Oh yeah, Xbox. I was saying I like Microsoft. Yes. Um, because, you know, even though I know that there are, they're this corporation that is after money. That's how corporations exist. Yes. They're also owned by Microsoft, and Microsoft are like, we have all the money. <laughs> Seri- no, seriously, we do. They have all of the money. Um, and Xbox is like, it's, it's, it reminds me of something that someone said once. Um, because you remember when Blizzard Activision was bought? No, Bethesda. When Bethesda was bought by Microsoft. Yeah. For seven billion dollars or something, something like and it was like one of the biggest acquisitions ever made in the video game sector. Yeah, and everyone was like, PlayStation now have to go out and buy Rockstar. That was what a lot of PlayStation people were saying. Um, and as you know, mine and Chris's opinion is the console was over. Yes. Everyone has all of them. Well, everyone who's heavily into game. Yeah, not not everyone does. So yeah, um, Jessica asked me a while back which console she should get Cooper for Christmas. She's getting another deal thing. A big old bitch. And I pretty much turned around and said, Xbox. Yeah. And I used to be a PlayStation. Though. And you would. used to be all out PlayStation. Because this controller is so much better. He still can't hold that controller. Hands are too small. It's a better controller. Yes. But <laughs> I said Xbox because you got Game Pass. you got Game Pass. You've got access to a lot more games. So there's the advantage there. So that was one of the bigger ones. Um, as much as I could play some other games with him, yeah. it's that thing of like, no. 
don't they, they, I also they, have they, an Xbox they, they, Chris they're, they're very I have far more games on Xbox Chris true, it's true it, it's, <laughs> it's the thing of like they, when you actually look at a lot of their stats they're very much the they're same. like for likeness they're, they're um, like for like that's all there is so it's literally a thing of what's gonna offer you one has game pass one doesn't game pass is cheaper exactly um no, but yeah, so Xbox bought Bethesda seven billion dollars. Yes, or was it seven billion or seven? It was something ridiculous, oh, and yeah. everyone was like, "PlayStation have to respond to this." And then the people at PlayStation were like, "Guys, guys, what you need to understand is that Xbox is owned by Microsoft. Yes. Microsoft literally go to Xbox. We don't care if you make money. Here's your allowance. Spend it how you will." Yeah. And they went, we're owned by Sony. Sony has nowhere near that money. No. So Sony literally sit there and... They saw you that, spent yeah. a billion dollars? What? A billion? Uh-huh. No, 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 we spent more than that. What? And, and, then, and then Xbox came out and bought Blizzard Activision. Yeah. Activision Blizzard. I can't remember which way it goes. I, I you would think it goes Activision Blizzard, because that's alphabetical, oh, no. but it, I'm pretty sure it's Blizzard Activision. Yeah, I mean, Blizzard Activision. Blizz Vision. See, Blizzard Activision sounds like it rolls off the tongue bell. It does. Um, so it's one of those things. We'll try to be gone. But then they bought them for like $64 billion. Oh. And uh, um, everyone at Sony kind of just went, yep. And all, I, 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 I'm assuming, because I really didn't pay attention to what the PlayStation fan, like the PlayStation fan base and hardcore PlayStationers, actually said about that but i'm sure they were like you've got to buy something playstation they were just like guys we recently locked down i think it was bungie did they lock down bungie they locked down something and they're like it cost us two billion dollars that was it (laughs) (laughs) that's all we can do um we don't have the pockets of microsoft and and microsoft to their credit i I cannot imagine them being like, okay, Activision, you can only make games for Xbox now. No. All of the Call of Duty games are going Xbox only. Because well, let's face it, Microsoft's on the side of things that also probably very similar to us. Console Wars are up. Yeah. It, 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 no. For, from what I understand, Xbox has been like getting in contact with a lot of people and being like, hey, 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 hey. Let's do this deal. You want to get on Game Pass? You want to put your games on Game Pass? Do you want your console to have Game Pass on it? We're willing to do all the work. You just have to say yes. And like... Yeah. It, it's kind of one of the awesomest things that could happen if it eventually does where your Game Pass covers every console. Which would be fantastic because, let's face it, then I could just stop paying multiple things. Exactly. It'd be brilliant for all of us. Um, yeah. But, well, you still have to play like your Sony subscription to get onto their servers and shit. But. Well, yeah. That, that but as, as, as people have always said in the streaming world, if Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, all of them got together and said seventy dollars a month, we'd pay it. You'd pay it to have it all, as opposed to now where you're pretty much paying seventy dollars, but you've got to have several different subscriptions. And when you you're not saving, you look through one. I don't want to watch anything on here. So you go to the next one and start looking through that, and then you've got to go through like five different things to eventually go. No, fuck it, I'll watch something on the first thing I looked at. Exactly. So it's like, it's not about saving money. Like, I don't think that's a thing. It's about convenience. And these systems advertise themselves as, look at all the convenience we bring you, but they're not. So it's like, people would actually rather pay more and have added convenience. And in the long run, they're not paying more. Well, a lot of the, like, anime ones, they've, they're they're, they're now going into one. Yeah, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, Disney went out and bought some of, the yeah. rights to some Fuck Disney. So, Disney now also has rights to Bleach. Ugh. So if you want to watch Bleach, you can't watch it on the anime streaming apps. You've got to go to Disney Plus. I'm actually interested in that because I hear they kept they actually carried on the story. They did. Um. So yes, they they did. Carry I, on I, the story. I would I would love to see the end of Bleach. Well, let's face it. Disney Plus has the rights to it in the sense that they put it on theirs outside of Japan. Yeah. You, you find Japan stuff that you cannot uh, you have to go for us You've My, got to go okay so on. I hate Disney that is something that I am fully yes. I hate them um, what I am I don't mind them buying anime though because I know they're going to dub it 
Disney are True, like yes. they're, they're going to dub it. The quality of the dubbing is I haven't seen because I haven't watched any Disney dub. I'm still really pissed off about the live action Mulan. Um, yeah. It made it made it was really shit compared to original Mulan. Did we Hashtag, discuss that in last week's. I think we just discussed that when we were watching Be a Man, the song. Um, but live action Mulan shit. Original Mulan actually fucking awesome because it's oh, about yeah. it's it's about character growth and using what you've got. Uh, New Mulan is just about being born magic. So. Uh, if you uh, new Mulan teaches you if you're not born magic you're fucked. And you, Old yeah. Mulan teaches you that if you are lacking in something, make up for it in something that you do have. And if I did like actually if you're pay lacking enough strength, attention to the movie, they got rid of two really good characters: hmm. the cricket and Mushu. Yep. Um, anyway, so enough about Mulan. So I haven't watched anything Disney, but I know that Disney is a company that would never force its it's people to read. Oh. No, they wouldn't. So that's that's the thing. So that, yes, that is going to get dark. But I also don't know how good good, good quality. I that being said, I know Disney know. has good quality voice actors. Yes, yeah. It just kind of depends on how much money they're willing to put towards it. That is true. But um, so as I was saying, anyway, it's like if you go on to Netflix in Japan, most anime is on Netflix in Japan. Mostly, it's just everywhere else in the world is like, no, 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 we don't have the rights to it. So you've got to go. On. Anyhow, um, yeah. So that's kind of that. So to get us back on point, yes. From playing the demo or the beta of the new Diablo game, I'm liking what I'm seeing. It doesn't feel as cash hungry as Diablo three was because there's something that I think a lot of people forget about Diablo three, which in its final iteration it didn't have any of but originally it was supposed to have a very real money cash system in it yes. like they were kind of planning for people to be able to make a living by playing the game and selling stuff in game that's that's kind of crazy like this is when it yeah. first came out back 10 years ago because yeah. okay. it came out 12 years ago, 11 years 12 years ago because it came out when I was in year 12. Yeah. Because the boys were super excited about it. Um, so that was kind of the idea with Diablo 3. And I'm hoping that the Xbox, hey, Microsoft... Well... Yeah, it'd be 11. You're right when you said 11. It's almost 12. You said you got, it came out when you were in grade 12? Yes. 2011. We're in 23. Oh, that's right. You were too. That's right. I'm um, forgetting the fact that I... Yeah. Yes. Um, so, you know, that was built into it. Like, that was an idea built into it. And I'm hoping that the Microsoft now owning Activision is going to kind of fix some of those scummy ways of Activision. Yeah. Um, only time will tell. But it's true, true. Like, as I said, I, I have this opinion of Microsoft, which is... Yes, they're making money, but they're making... They're capitalistic. They're just not assholes about it. Yes. We want to make money, but we're not going to be dickheads about it. Like, Which, act, and Activision was. Course. Like, Activision yeah. were like, we're going to make money and we're going to be super scummy. They're kind of like, yay. Yeah. So, I'm hoping that now that they're owned by Microsoft, a little bit of that Microsoft, don't be a dick about it, will rub off. Which no, I would love, yeah. because... It would mean some changes to some games that have been pretty predatory for many years now, like Call of Duty. Yes. So yeah, so I'm I am I'm hoping for good things from the fact that Activision is now owned by Microsoft. Fingers crossed. Oh, no. well, of course, yes. Um. Yeah. You know, we can we can only hope. Um, well, yeah, that's it. And yeah, hope hope that. You know, hopefully other companies hope, jump hope. on board with the idea of Game Pass and we could finally get to a point of just one subscription yeah well see as but, I said my, my biggest thing is that I really hope that Activision kind of under the Microsoft thing where it's like no no you're owned by Microsoft now doesn't we don't give a fuck how much money you make <laughs> oh yeah yeah because you know before it's always about the shareholders and the shareholders are like we want 200% growth money Whereas now, like, hopefully now that they're owned by 
Xbox, Xbox are just kind of like an Xbox being owned by Microsoft, Microsoft being just like, here's your money, go spend it, off you go. <laughs> um, that, you know, Activision's need for growth drops and they Probably. become a little bit more but then the next for thing the is, player. Are they, un- are they going to be annoyingly be set in their ways? That is the next thing. I don't think that matters as much as it, it sounds like it might because the bosses at Activision now answer to someone other than the shareholders. True. So it's kind of like, yeah. you know, um, as much as it looks bad when they were with the shareholders, bad press, as long as they're making profit, is fine with the shareholders. Yeah. Whereas with Xbox, I feel they take bad press a lot more personally. Fair, and it's like, fair. guys, why are you doing this? Don't do this. It makes us look bad. We want to look good. That's fair. Because I think, and I think it comes down to what you were saying before about like the stuff they're doing, they're making money in other ways. Xbox are kind of making their money through their good guy image. We're here to True. help. We're here to be good, and that means that they are good. But that's also how they how they make money. It's yes. like, no, no, we're not going to force you to do this. We're not going to force you to do this. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. Look how good we are. And people go, yeah, they are good. And then when it comes to you know like your kids getting into gaming, you bring them onto Xbox, or your cousins and nieces and nephews getting into gaming, you suggest Xbox. So they get a $700 sale. As much as the first next-gen console I got was PS5, it's still going to be like, no, don't go for PS5. You sell it for eventually. It will fall on you and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes <laughs> we all know it's going to happen eventually. If you buy a PlayStation 5, it will fall on you and kill you. Especially if we're talking about giving it to someone like the niece or nephew. Yes. Yeah. Who are... No, it's probably bigger a very than similar size to the console. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, um, we do joke about this, but yeah, no. The, the truth is, like, yes, I understand. That's like, I kind of feel like that's how Xbox make their money, and like, they're more concerned with their image because, again, they also get given money by Microsoft. Yeah, and as long as they're not like massively in the negatives, true. Microsoft is like. Oh, don't you know most computers in the world run off us? We're making cash. <laughs> yes, we are. That is an area where we keep that spending. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, so no, definitely when like buying a console for a small child, the ideal one is something like a Switch. Mm. Controllers are smaller. Controllers are smaller, but the whole system is far more fragile. Especially True. considering it's like, you put it in your hands, and if there's one thing I know about little kids... They drop things with their hands. They do. Yeah, and you know. That's why they Oh no! I dropped my phone. Ah, oh, fuck! The screen's broken. Oh no! I dropped my entire console. You and it's not di- as it's not as sturdy as a PlayStation Five. Do you know what the difference between dropping your phone and dropping a Switch is? The phone's probably more likely to break. Let's say they both break in this situation. Oh, the phone's far more expensive. Exactly. <laughs> so Switch isn't that bad. So it's, but no, definitely that's probably the way to go because that a lot of those games on there are small children yeah. are fine with. It's, but, it's good for it, and then when they're a little older, yes, they move up because like, because PlayStation's going closer to the direction of an Xbox controller without going there because they don't want to. They right? can't be the same. <laughs> Even though you get look, with it, it's kind of like it's it's kind of like. Since the Xbox 360, you no matter what side, if you're a PlayStation hardcore, even you have to admit, the Xbox controller is superior. It fits the hands better. It feels better. It's nobler in the right spots. <laughs> I've never cared where the analog sticks up, but... I drastically. But I do agree, it, it, it sits nicer. Especially with people like the two of us. Big men. I can't, yeah. If, if we go back, so I, a few years ago. Like this controller here. Dude, yeah. look how tiny it is. If I put both my mitts on it, oh, I'm touching my fingers. Oh, <laughs> right, dead set. Now, now, if you have luck, grab a PS3 controller. Hmm. 
it is so much more, and I never noticed until you I got to operate it, it with uh, tweezers. Yes, because I got a P- when I got the PS4, I was sort of like, oh, this is a better size because again, hands are bigger, and I just kept going through. And then one day, I'm like, oh, I want to play this game, so I went to the PS3 back on, grabbed the controller, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know what would have solved that issue? Backwards compatibility, it like the Xbox it, had. It, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been great. Um, yes, no, I agree with that. Um, but no, 100%. They went closer to the Xbox controller or started moving towards it with the PS4, which is like, we've got to get a bigger size. But no, we've still got to have the PlayStation look. No, I, I think, to be honest, grabbing my PlayStation 4 controller again, the only reason they made this bigger was because they were like, aha, we're going to put this on it. And that's the only thing that they That'll make it so much better than the Xbox controller. And you went, oh, it's bigger. And then you pick up an Xbox controller, and you're like, ah, this fits in my hand so nicely. You pick up one of these, and you're like, ah, I feel like if I just push my hands together as if clapping, it will break and shatter. And well, that's it. So when they went to the PS5, they went closer to the Xbox, but they still refused to go there. However, Check out our new controller. It looks more like an Xbox controller, but don't fucking say that. <laughs> <laughs> However... The Elite controller through PlayStation is just an Xbox controller with the Xbox across the Adam PlayStation written in. It's, I believe it's a lot closer. I, it's been ages since I've actually looked at so it. it. It's, it's just this, right? This is my Gears of War one. But yeah, so here, here, they, what they've done is they've put a PS. <laughs> so they've gone down the track. It still looks like a PS5 controller. But they're going down the track of putting all the, like, a couple of bumps on there. You can change over the analog sticks but it's not as simple as the xbox ones where it's just the analog sticks <laughs> pops up the whole fucking thing pops up look well, that's not going to lead to problems yeah so it's like, um no uh, look yeah. uh, as we said we're um, i'm i may seem overly xbox positive and it's because i am yes but but it's also because it's for good reason <laughs> it, i don't really hate playstation i think they're great I, they make some really good games I just think that when it comes to their console technology, they play catch up a lot. And like, whenever you get like a place, and I've known so many who are like, I would never touch Xbox. That's Microsoft. There's only one area. PlayStation are for the gamers. And you're like, right. And then they go like, like I've had these people come and be like, do you know PlayStation's doing this now? I'm like, oh yeah. You mean like Xbox have been doing for years now? And they go, no, no, it's different. Um, yeah. So. Anyway, it, it's, it's just because, like, yeah, for a while their PlayStation people became really unsufferable because they're like, ah, oh, PlayStation 4 is better than the Xbox One. There's, there's only one thing PlayStation did that Xbox hadn't done at the time, which was put a Blu-ray player in. That was it. And then the next generation, they couldn't hold that over them because they both had it. Yeah, but uh, everyone PlayStation was like, PlayStation 4 is better than the Xbox One, and they may have been right at the start. But by the end of the generation, Xbox was once again doing circles around PlayStation, much like it had with the 360. It's just the people on PlayStation were like, no, we, it, it, PlayStation sold more. And you're like, they may have sold more. However, Xbox constantly made the console better for the people who did buy it. PlayStation went, we've already got your money. Go away. <laughs> no, they made it one extra one. What? They literally said, "Which pretty much just a, we can't put in backwards compatibility." Oh yeah, I know. It's not that hard. And and Xbox has literally proven that it's just a patch. Literally yeah. to this day, because the PlayStation has no sense of anything, you cannot plug headphones into the PlayStation controller and have sound coming from the system. It goes, no, no, you're listening on headphones. There was a point in time where you could, but I think they just patched that out. Because I remember doing it at one point, and then I'm like, why the fuck can't I change this? What is happening? Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, so I just kind of got over the PlayStation, like, elitist being like, PlayStation 4's better, and I was like, is it though? Not really. And now in the next system, it's kind of, once again, Xboxes leading the way and playstation is being playstation which is to say they're making very good games but overall the system could be better as at this current point they're practically the same oh the the, the actual hardware is but yeah 
I can almost guarantee you oh, that settings Xbox, and everything. Yeah. Xbox will do something. Plus, the thing is, the difference I'm not between sure Xbox what. Series X and the Xbox One when it comes to how the system runs and looks and all that, practically the same. So they didn't really go through and change a whole lot. So you had to learn a whole new system, but PlayStation did. Yeah, they, they kept some things very similar, but it was a decent um, change. But again, I, th- I think that comes right. down again to Xbox's whole concept at the point, which is like, whatever Xbox you own, the Xbox, it's, it's kind of like Microsoft. You might have a computer, you might have a laptop, you might have a tablet, but Microsoft will run the same on it. Yes. And I think Xbox is taking the same that lead where it's yeah. like, doesn't matter what system you use, the Xbox menus, homes, everything all run the same because we want it to be intuitive to you when you upgrade yeah. no, no, no. and that that makes that does make a difference trust me oh massive the whole reason i spent years getting iphones another company i fucking hate was because i was too lazy to learn how to use a samsung yeah so it literally took me five minutes when i finally pulled the trigger after my brand new iphone falling about a foot onto tiles and becoming a brick and I was just like, never again. Yep. Um, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's and that's it. It's it is an annoying situation. Like one of the things they did with the party system mm. is on the PlayStation, on the PS4, yep. you started a party and it was just starting a party. It did nothing. Mm-hmm. However, on the PS5, that new system is it actually starts a chat. Okay. And the annoying thing to that is. If you just go in and then select people to start a new party, it starts a new chat every time, even though it could be the exact same people in the chat. So if you wanted to not have, over the span of a couple of months, 50 different chats with the same people in it, you'd actually just keep going through the chat. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, It's weird. So that's why like we have a couple set up that it's like years of we've named these so that these ones stay in your favorite of them so they stay near the top and you just go into that i really don't like that Um, it's it's an odd system i like the fact that i can jump onto my xbox chat on my pc as well well the new thing that i did another thing i like now is they've now gone over to discord discord so you can now just use discord whereas beforehand if i wanted to play on my laptop well playing with people on PlayStation, I would generally have to join the PlayStation party, which meant I had to have my PlayStation on, but the only thing... You can also do that with Xbox, I just haven't tried yet. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I just generally run through my... I suppose that'd work a bit different, it probably would have an app there. Yeah, I think so. All all I know is I know it is on the Xbox, PlayStation. I I had heard it was, but I didn't know how it worked. Um, I haven't haven't looked into it, because PlayStation, you've actually... I would rather use this whole setup whilst I'm playing the Xbox to use Discord because then it's not on that. It's got all of this behind it. That is fair. <laughs> and I can use all of my good stuff, like my seven mixers and my fucking good mic. And that makes sense. That is fair. So what what are you going to do on PlayStation? Just so you're aware, my good mic is so good that I can have it sitting in front of the speakers and Chris can hear me and not what I'm watching. Yes. It is a plus. Um, it's very nice. We don't use it for this because it probably wouldn't pick up Chris because it hates him. Yes, it, uh, it told me. So what? What you've got to do with the PlayStation One is you just have the app on your phone, start the chat in Discord. Yep. And when you're going to start it, say transfer over to PlayStation. Oh, okay. So you've got your PlayStation connected to it, and then it just transfers, and you're now just using your PlayStation on Discord. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how Microsoft works, but I'm also probably not going to bother with it because, as I said. If I'm using Discord, I would much rather run it through. You know what? It would probably be good for, like, Jordan and Jaden, who don't have PCs, who don't have the setup that I have, um, where you're, like, you're sitting in the room where you have your TV for playing video games, whereas I'm literally sitting at my desk to play video games on my computer. Where everything is, yeah. Yeah. So, so that would make sense. And um, that, that way they could be said that, better audio. It's also it. not an issue because I can literally just start a party and 
the Xbox app. On you, the you can, PC. but as I said, like Discord would allow me to use stuff that isn't this. <laughs> True. Uh, as 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 much as I do like my you know headphones and they're, they're good quality, it's not as good as an actual proper studio mic. Oh yeah, no, hundred um, percent. So that, and I've I just use my but, headset for the most part because I don't have a setup. Yeah, but I um, still have access to everything, so I can do it all. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. As I was saying, I'm I'm kind of hoping that we get to see some of good guy Microsoft rubbing off on Activision, that and overall making them a la- less predatory company. Which would be good. I would love to see stuff like we see for Halo especially the Battle Pass system, moving into some Activision Blizzard games. That would be nice. Um, we've already talked about this in depth, but well, yeah. needless to say, I was proven correct in my assumptions, which yeah. is nice. Okay, so what is good? And... Not for me. Be bragged about it. And, um... I don't know if that... I don't know why I brag when I'm right. I shouldn't have to. for it... a while. Maybe. I, yeah, as I said, I don't know why I brag when I'm right, because considering I'm always right, not it, always. it should just be a shoot. No, I, I shouldn't have to be like, you know, I was right. It should just be like... I'm saying not always, as much as I can't think of Of a time I was. As much as I can't think of anything right now, there has been times. But it's been so long that I just don't remember it. So he's now going to tell you that it's never happened, but it has... Do you know why I'm always right? Because I try and be well informed. What is true? And that's a plot. That and is... by being well informed, I make well informed decisions. And by making well informed decisions and statements, I don't believe I'm you always generally... make well informed decisions. I can't think of one I haven't. <laughs> I'm assuming there's a few. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, just, no um... I'm assuming there's a few. Like, well, drunk. Let's put that one. It's bound to be at least one time. I'm fairly sure my decisions then are on one point. Oh, and probably some of the best. <laughs> um, your on point decision of running through. Was it like it, uh, like it was ice cold night in winter at the university and you went swimming and then ran back? I wasn't drunk. Was it, no, I, I'm not saying you were drunk, but I wouldn't say that was a great decision. Uh, that was for Scavon. It was for winning points. Points must be won. Points must be won, but you um, also forgot your key. To get in the building. Oh no, that was that was at the snow. It was at the snow. Yeah, that was at the snow. No, okay, so at the snow, you ran back and then you forgot your key. I wouldn't say that was one for. No, it was a fine decision. I couldn't be bothered getting changed. I I looked at the thing and went, freezing to death, or spending five minutes in a change room with Heaps old guys them. walking around with their dick and balls hanging out, freezing to death. That's the choice. Okay, fair, fair. I'll give, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> That's the choice. It's it's not a hard choice. You sit there and you go, okay, old man digging balls, freezing to death. Freezing to death is always the better option. It is. Um, no, the um. But yeah, so yeah, I'm 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 again, I'm hoping to see some changes. Yes. But speaking about Call of Duty, because I've recently been thinking a lot about Call of Duty. Okay. Yes. And about what the next one will be, because we've just had Modern Warfare Two drop. Yeah. Which means the next one is probably going to be... Now, there's this generally three things which Call of Duty sit to. Yes. World War Two, mm-hmm. the Cold War, yes, or future warfare. Very true. The played out future warfare. I don't mm, think we yeah. can go back to future warfare because they don't really have a clue about future warfare and they're kind of like... In 2,000 years, we'll still be using relatively the same guns. And they make, like, one adjustment every now and then. Um, and pretty yeah. much Call of Duty's idea of future war- warfare is war running. <laughs> yeah, which is an odd, an odd um, thing. I think if you want to play a really good future warfare game, you've got Titanfall. Yeah. Um, World War Two. They could go back to there. But it's kind of played out. Yeah, um, um, by this point, yeah. The, the, there's a lot of untapped potential. Like they could make a really good story-based game for World War Two, 
and then the multiplayer is pretty much just chuck the new guns into Warzone and have a few multiplayer maps like the oh, true. Look at every Call of Duty over the last 10 years and the multiplayer really doesn't change. The only thing that changes are the maps and how the weapons look. Um, otherwise, it's still, it still it never changes. True. It's all just running and gunning. So we could go back to World War II. Um, the campaign, as I said, would be different. It would be the, the, the linchpin for it. And there's some interesting things they could do. Like with Vanguard, they finally admitted that there were more people in the Second World War than the Americans and the Soviets, which was a nice change. Yeah. Um, yeah. They did the campaign terribly, though. It was really shit. I know um, what it. Oh. Yeah, well, you, you, saved, you saved a board. Oh, sweet. Um, Good. You literally, yeah, no, the campaign was shit. I was super happy because we finally got, like, some kind of acknowledgement that Australians were in World War II, and mm-hmm. so was the British Empire. That's actually a first, I think, for a Call of Duty game, to acknowledge that yeah. the, the, the British and other people were also involved in World War II, other than... The Germans, the Japanese, the Soviets, and Americans. I'm fairly yeah. sure they've been the only four factions that have ever been in a Call of Duty game. Which is weird. Uh, based on World War II. Were the Americans like one of the last to join? They were pretty late. Yeah. But they did, you know, they, they're an American company, so Amer- and America's very America centric. But, True. as True. I said, Vanguard did a lot to kind of be like, hey, other people fought this war. Here's a little bit of their stories. And so we got to see some really cool stuff like the Rats of Tobruk, which is an, if you know you know anything about fucking World War II, that's a really good story because yeah. that was a fucking, that was a rough time. But Australians and New Zealanders fucking owned it. Fucking so, so, Rommel, Love was like, holy crap, these guys are fucking insane. If, if I had to, t- like, there's literally a, a comment from Rommel based on the Rats of Tobruk, which is like, if I had to take hell, I'd use Australians to take it and New Zealanders to hold it. Like, that's the kind of thing. And so for years, that has been overlooked because obviously being a tiny country at the time, Australia really didn't have that many people fighting mm, the yeah. war. You know, we weren't millions. Yes, yes. Because we only had a population of a couple million. <laughs> I yeah. think something like, if I've done my maths, if I can remember correctly, it was something like, 7 million population and 700,000 service people that took part in World War II, which if you actually think about it, is 10% of the population. It's quite a large chunk. That's a pretty big chunk population-wise. One of the biggest. Not the biggest. There were some countries that had, like, fuck-all population. And nearly everyone fought because they were invaded. Well, true. um, Didn't have a choice. Yeah. But, you know, it, it... So we could see a World War II... But if we did see another World War Two, I want would want it to go completely opposite to Vanguard. I don't want to see anything like Vanguard ever again. It was so terrible. Yeah. Um, but I would love to see other, you know, like I would love to see a bunch of stories about fighting World War Two, with like yeah. three or four missions in each place to do, you know, like these historic battles. Yeah. Where it's like you know you you're doing stuff in the battle. I don't think I ever want to see Call of Duty go any further back than World War Two. I would yeah. hate for them to go to World War One. Yeah. Um, mainly because World War One does it, it it doesn't fit with the way Call of Duty's played. No. Um, it, no like no. the if you want to play a World War One game, you go and play Battlefield One. Yes. Battlefield One has its issues. Me and my friends who play it always complain that light machine guns are far too accurate and too powerful and don't have enough negatives, considering that really you should not be able to shoot a light machine gun from World War One whilst running around. Yeah. Um, they're not really, well, not accurately at least. But Battlefield 1, if you want to play a World War One game, has done it really well, and they did a lot of research, and that's kind of where I think Call of Duty always falls down. Call of Duty seems less researchy, more... It's a Call of Duty game, so I'd hate to see them try World War One. World yeah. War One is, it's it's just something that I'm like Call of Duty could never pull off, because well, like a part of World War One is, you know, the fear of 
artillery, the long doing nothing, the hectic close quarters combat when it yeah. happened. Um, and I just don't think Call of Duty could pull that off. It's it's not a Call of Duty thing that it could. And yeah. I think if they tried, it would just feel really hollow and kind of disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, um, I can see that. So I, ha- I I never want them to go back. The other one that I was thinking could be really interesting yeah. is going back to the 60s and 80s, respectively, hmm. and having that kind of Cold War. But instead of being focused on the Cold War, which not a fucking great deal happened in, let's be honest, that's why it's called a Cold War. It's not really great for a first-person shooter. No. If the two main factions never really actually engaged each other. But yeah. Yeah. what about a game that had half of its campaign as an American in Vietnam yeah. and then the other half of its game as a Soviet in Afghanistan? So you play as the Soviets, yeah. you play as the Americans in their two in in two of the bigger kind of more defining points of yeah the cold war when the like because black ops one black ops one has a bit of bit of uh vietnam in it and i think they're some of the best levels in black ops one yeah um but i would love to see vietnam not from the eyes of an elite operator more from the eyes of your standard infantry yeah so a little bit more hectic a little bit less you're a special operator a little bit more like you're a grunt you know so doing stuff like pbrs huey raids you know like i think there's a lot to be done there even going down the track of like i think one of the battlefields did it but you're pretty much playing someone at the start and they you don't go far. They die. Yeah, that's so, the opening of Battlefield 1. Yeah, I thought so. Um, because it's kind of all about how in World War One, literally death was always around the corner. Yeah. And there was no sense or reason. These people weren't special trained people with all the tech and all the, you know. Literally, you could be a player, like, you could be a guy on the battlefield in a melee and you run out of ammo and that's the end of it. Yep. You don't get to run back and be like, give me ammo. You pull out your shovel and you charge anyway, because that's, that's what World War One was like. Yep. The fight continued. Um, and that's why, I, again, I don't want Call of Duty to ever take on World War One. Yeah. World War One, like, I, I have this very feeling about World War One, and people are like, oh, World War Two was worse. But it's like, World War Two also had a reason to be fought. Yes. You know, World War Two was about the liberation of the Jewish people and the horrific crimes that were happening to them. Don't get me wrong, that shit was happening in World War One as well. Yeah. But in reality, World War One was just a massive waste of life. For no reason. Yeah. For meters of mud is really what they were fighting for. Yes. There was you know it, it was it was just a horrific thing, and that's why I don't want to ever see Call of Duty attempt it because yeah, there were heroic points and stuff, but World War One, you know, well, in, in World War Two, fighting the Nazis was a good cause. In yes. World War One, fighting the Germans was just something you were told to do. They weren't, yes. you know, they weren't evil. They weren't doing all these experiments on children and all the shit that they got up to in World War Two. They were just the enemy. And we want that piece of mud that they're standing on. Off you go. Yeah. So, again, never want Call of Duty to touch that because I just don't feel they have the respect to. No. Like, no, no, no. as I said, World War Two numbers are much worse. But World War One, I've always felt, is a bigger tragedy because it was just... What was it done for? It's a good point. There was just nothing, and it led to some of the worst things. World War Two is a reaction to World War One. The Cold War is a reaction to World War One. The world we live in now is a reaction to World War One and the Soviets becoming a thing during that time period. So it's all just kind of like 
I, I, I think World War One is one of the biggest tragedies. Maybe not on number wise. World War Two was definitely worse, but nice. just so much loss for nothing. So I'd never want to see as I said, never want to see Call of Duty touch it because I don't think they can give it enough respect. And in my mind, that is one of the wars that we have to pay the most respect to because of what it signified. Yep, no, that's fair. Um, but yeah, so I'd love to see like a Vietnam. You're the Americans. You're not a special forces operator. You're just a grunt. Some of that jungle fighting, some of the stuff with the Hueys, all of that kind of stuff. They, again, they kind of touched on it in the newest Cold War game, Cold War, but not a lot. And I'm like, Vietnam, I get that it was a bloody nose for the Americans because they lost it. But I'm like, yeah. that's a war where Call of Duty has never really mentioned. And there's a lot of stuff, you know, you could have the Tet Offensive, you could have, you know, there's, there's so many points you could have. So you could play out like, half the campaign is a mini scale of that war yep. then the yep. second half you play as a soviet in afghanistan yep. same kind of scenarios you know the technically the technologically superior force going in against a bunch of you know rebel fighters fighting for their homeland you have you should have all the advantages but no you yeah. don't these guys uh, they they end up winning and I think that would be a really awesome kind of thing. We haven't seen that played out before. Like, yeah. I don't think we've ever seen the Afghanistan war in a Call of Duty. Oh, actually, no, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, there is yeah. one mission that references it. Yes. So, you know, I'd, I'd love a campaign that's kind of like these two imperial forces going in against the technologically. Yeah, so I'd love to see a Call of Duty where it's, you know, going up, dropped it, um, going up against the, you know, you, you play the superpowers pretty much yeah. in the two notorious wars where they lost to what what should have been easy victories sure, yeah. and there, there's a lot of stuff you could do you know like as I said you could have PBR missions you could have and as I said I know that the original Black Ops had some of it but some and that was more focused on being a special forces soldier who was doing stuff in Vietnam you know you were in Vietnam for a reason Whereas I kind of want to see the whole thing of you're in Vietnam for no reason. <laughs> you're just here to fight. Yeah. Uh, you are a grunt. Do the fighting. You know, clear the tunnels. Do this. Do that. And I think in considering Black Ops One was so long ago now, I would love to see the Vietnam yeah. War. I would love to see the Soviet Afghan War, but in the eyes of a Soviet fighter. So yeah. again, kind of like the theme of the new Call of Duty being like, you are just a grunt going where your government sent you. Now, you are not special in any way. It'd be good. You're just a, good game. you're just a guy. The other one that I think could be interesting, though, I don't know as much about it, would be a an interesting, yeah, um, setting would be the Korean War. Okay. I yeah. think. I think that could be another one. So yeah. to get away from the modern, leave the future, you, Call of Duty, you can't do it. You Every game you've made in the future has kind of been a giant flop. Leave that to Titanfall. They make a good, fun, futuristic shooter yeah. that has giant robots in it. it um, go into the past, but don't go back. You could go back to World War Two, but it's kind of played out, so you'd have to choose scenarios that we haven't seen. If I see another fucking D-Day landing in a Call of Duty game, I'm going to scream. Oh, Jesus. Um, that's not true. D-Day landing's iconic. I get it. I do. But if literally, if we get another World War Two game where it's like D-Day landing to the surrender, World War Two was going on a lot longer than that. True. That's just the part where we were winning. Um, yes. So... You could go to World War Two, but I'd like to see a little bit... I'd, I'd like to, if I'm being fully honest, the D-Day stuff should be towards the end of the game. There's a game like that. I'm pretty sure there is a game out there where D-Day is the ending. I um, don't know what it is. Yeah, fucked by now. But, you know, there's an idea for you. Um, you, could, you could have it up to the point where they started actually winning and being like, yep, you don't get to play the winning parts. Go play World War Two. The last World War game we made for that. Um, yes. But if I'm being perfectly honest, I would like to see 
Cold War era, but not another one focused on the actual Cold War. I would like to see it focused on the actual wars that were fought there. Korean, Vietnam, Soviet, Afghan. And the, so the reason that I'd love to see one that's Vietnam, Soviet, Afghan with that split, we, uh, even though they're so far apart time-wise, like the, there's almost 10 years gap between the two. Yeah. Um, the reason I'd love to see that is because they really are... They're pretty much the same invasion. Like, the superpower, technically superior person, goes into the inferior and lost. They're, they're very just opposed. And I would love to see the two kind of... A campaign that has them both in it, but I highly doubt it because I don't think there's ever been a Call of Duty game where they've forced you to play as the Soviets because they're the bad guys, don't you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm just kind of like, yeah, but you can... Well, actually, no, sorry, that you did play as a Soviet in World War Two, in Vanguard. One yeah. of the stuff you play is the Red Army. And in World at War, you play as the Red Army, so they're Soviet. Mm. But you never play Soviets from the Cold War era. That's so true. that would be wrong. Of course, yeah. Exactly. Because they were the bad guys. And I'm just like, I think that would be a very interesting game. Vietnam, Soviets. Of course, me saying this means absolutely nothing because that game has already been in development for about three years now mm -hmm. and will probably be coming out in the next couple of months. No, sorry, it'll be coming out in about October. Um, okay. yep. But, yeah, I, I, I'm just, you know, you can go World War Two, but if we get another World War Two American story, fuck, that's been, you've, you've done that about ten times now. If we get another game like Vanguard, go to hell. If we get another game like Cold War, fuck off. Um, modern Warfare is an actual war, please. Yeah. I don't think that's too hard to ask for. No. Um, yeah. Considering your biggest hits were Modern Warfare. It's true. Although, you know, again, don't overplay it. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, that's actually interesting. Give me, Chris, rap for a couple minutes. Um... Can't cover me while I look up the new Call of Duty. Cover you. Yeah, just like make something up. I'm trying to think of where, where this started from like news from the week. News from the week? It's because I've been thinking about this for a while. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I don't think I've really got too much news from the week other than the appointment hospital appointment. Yeah, well, that's just fuck. It was like it was something. I wasted my fucking time, is what that was. But no, I'm trying to think. Oh, that doesn't look good. Is there anything else that popped up? Okay. What? There will be a Call of Duty November 10, 2023. Yeah. I'm not. Oh. What is it? So far, the only thing we know about it is <clears throat> currently codenamed Jupiter. It sounds futuristic. It does. I don't it does. like futuristic Call of Duties. If they take it into space, there's yeah. other games that <laughs> they, they took the last one into space. Infinite Warfare. Not a terrible game, I will say. Had oh. some very fun parts. Very shit game overall. Okay, fair, fair. Um, I played the game. Okay. My my level of Call of Duty, right? I've ranked them like this. How many times do I play the campaign? Because remember, multiplayer okay. is multiplayer is just skin changes that's all multiplayer is in any call of duty true um go back and play call of duty black ops 2 you, you pretty much got what modern warfare 2's multiplayer is true um yeah so th there's nothing different there so it's all based on the story so black ops 4 is definitely the worst because there was no campaign uh, that's right there wasn't so there. worst game ever made call of duty well done with that mm. um because that was the only reason I played any of the Call of Duties initially was played the campaign. Uh, I did like the original okay. Modern Warfare 2 because they had the Spec Ops and a lot of different types of missions and they were fucking great. Oh, yeah. Loved them. Otherwise, multiplayer, I played a handful of times and yeah. Okay. Like, so I never liked it, really. The best Call of Duties. Based on their story. And how many times I've played their story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Call of Duty 19. Okay. Modern Warfare 2019. Yep. 
I literally just turned that on to play the story because it's so good. Okay. Yeah. Modern Warfare 22, 2023. Two. Yes. Two, 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 two. Lots yes. of two. Because it's a continuation of that story. It is, yes, yes. Modern Warfare Original. Modern yes. Warfare 2 Original. Yes. Modern Warfare 3 Original. Definitely the low point of the Modern Warfare story, but still holds up. Yeah. World at War. Yeah. Great story. World War 2. Oh, it was 3 that had the Spec Ops, wasn't it? 3 also had Spec Ops, yes. Both of them. Right. Yeah. Uh, World War 3. No, sorry. World War 2. The game that's literally called World War 2. I played that story like twice. It wasn't bad. It's not the best Call of Duty game story wise, but played it multiple times. Actually, no, that's a lie. That does not go there. Black Ops 1 and 2 go there. Yes. Black Ops 3 does not make the list. Uh, and then, I only ever played that because I'm the zombie maps. Then World War 2. And yeah. that is the only ones that I've ever gone like, yeah, I'll play the story again. Fair. Uh, Cold War played the story once and went, it's not bad. It's just not great. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of one of those stories that evolves around the twist. And once you know the twist, you just kind of go, oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Vanguard. Absolutely terrible. Uh, Black Ops 3. Fucking shit. Uh, I'm not going to go back to like Call of Duty 1, 2, and 3. Because okay, they're yeah. so old, it's just not worth it. Um, I'm trying to think now. Infinite Warfare, Advanced Warfare, these are stories that were just rubbish. So, as I said, the way you base, the way you say whether a Call of Duty is any good is an honest campaign, and if you're willing to play it multiple times. And there are some where you're like, yes, I would play this game again. And there are some where you're like, wow, that story was rubbish. And people go like, oh yeah, but you jump, then jump straight into multiplayer. And it's like, no, because the multiplayer doesn't fucking change. No. It doesn't fucking change. They're still using the original Warzone. Yes. Or maybe they've changed it now for the new Modern Warfare. Oh, uh, yeah. Because it's modern. called, it's, it's Warzone 2.0. Yeah, I've never played it. Um, but for the last, like, four games, they were still using the Warzone that came out in Modern Warfare 2019. So that tells you how little the multiplayer changes. They didn't even pretend it was something different. So, oh, nice. That's yeah. So you base it on the campaign. If the campaign is any good, then it's a good Call of Duty game. Because if the campaign's good, you can forgive the fact that the multiplayer is exactly what you've seen before. True. Um, true. And let's face it, when you spend as much on a Call of Duty game as they cost these days you want to be able to do something when the 10 year olds when you've had enough being killed by 10 year olds and having them screaming at you because unfortunately that's what Call of Duty is we have to work well, and we don't have the practice a 10 year old has it's, it's just more the fact that 10 year olds go I killed you I killed you and when you kill them back they go I the fan you cheated no like fuck off that is oh, that and that's and that's what true, Call of yeah. Duty that's what Call of Duty multiplayer is it's just playing a bunch of fucking children yeah who think that because they play Call of Duty, they're hard. <laughs> <laughs> right. That is that's a true statement. So, yeah, you base your Call of Duties on whether or not they're good, off how good they are campaign-wise, because if they're you, once you've spent the money on the game, if you can jump into the campaign and still have fun, it's money well spent. If you go, like, the only thing that would bring me back to this is the multiplayer, then you could be playing a Call of Duty five, ten years old. Save yourself some money. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, makes sense. Project Jupiter. That's worrying. It is. That sounds futuristic. Yeah, it does. Call of Duty need to stay away from the future, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's concerning. I really do hope they don't like go to space. <sighs> Who knows? We will all have to wait until the tenth of November to find out. But, in saying that, guys, uh, we've been going for long enough now that I'm happy to call it quits. I don't have anything else to say. Do you have anything else to say? I'm just trying to think of something else. Chris doesn't have anything else to say. He's a very boring person. I am. Um, As always, guys, I've been Darcy, joined by Chris. 
Um, thank you for joining us. If you liked, like, subscribe, comment, or more comes after comment. Like, subscribe, and comment. Those are the yeah, things. And that's just shit. Or, you, I mean, you can hit the bell. Is there a bell anymore? Fairly certain there is. We have to investigate this bell. We, we will. If there is no bell, Chris will make a public apology. I won't. In a maid costume. Maybe. <laughs> um, no, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. See you guys. See ya.